America doesn't need a big parade to convince the world that it has a military. Trust me, the world knows America has a military. <laughs> it's in their countries right now. <laughs> like, if you... You don't need one. If you really want a parade, just, like, every time there's a drone strike, just fly another drone behind it playing marching music, you know? Just like, ba 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 da ba ba da ba 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 There's a parade. And although Trump is really excited about uh, getting to play with the army like they're his G.I. Joes, uh, luckily, most people are adults. I say that it's a fantastic waste of money to amuse the president. It's kind of cheesy, and I think shows weakness, quite frankly. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. We've got to also be cautious on how we do spending. We have a Napoleon in the making here. I don't know. It seems like a waste of money. Damn. You know it's bad when even Fox News thinks this is a waste of money. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, you can't spend that much on a parade. You need to save it for sexual harassment settlements. Come on! <laughs> but the reason, the reason a lot of people are against this parade is not just because of the waste of time and money. It's because, France aside, military parades have come to be associated with authoritarian regimes, like North Korea, the Soviet Union, and China. And now, look, a military parade on its own doesn't mean that Trump is gonna be a dictator. But it's when you look at everything else that your spidey sense starts to tingle. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like firing the FBI director who was investigating his campaign, discrediting the electoral process by claiming voter fraud. And he just this week joked that not clapping for him is treason. Yeah. I mean, he even gave top government jobs to his own kids. Right? And I mean, sure, those are his smartest kids, but who's their competition? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and let's be honest, none of this took us by surprise. The whole time Trump was running for president, he couldn't stop talking about how much he admires strong men around the world. Saddam Hussein, you know what he did well? He killed terrorists. He did that so good. I think I'd get very, along very well with Vladimir Putin. On the phone with Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte, President Trump says, quote, I just wanted to congratulate you because I am hearing of the unbelievable job on the drug problem. What do you make of the North Korean leader? Obviously, he's a pretty smart cookie. Oh, that's one way to describe Kim Jong-un, smart cookie. Trump is so thirsty. Like, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he's on all these dictators' Instagrams just commenting on every pic. Great photo, follow back. <laughs> nice abs, like for like. Come on, sexy missile, follow back. So, in the world of authoritarians, many people are now asking, where does Trump fit in? I mean, I know he aspires to them, but does he measure up? Well, it just so happens that over the weekend, they held the 51st annual Oppressi Awards, where the world's greatest dictators are honored for their work. Now, you've probably never heard of these awards because we made them up, but still. <laughs> I was asked to host them. And that's not a gig that you can turn down. You literally cannot turn it down. They kidnapped me and threw me in a trunk. But here are some of the highlights. The 51st annual awards for achievement in the autocratic arts. The Oppressi. President of the Philippines is here, everybody. Rodrigo Duterte, everybody. Yeah, of course, he's famous for killing drug users, uh, which I guess is why he's not invited to uh, Seth Rogen's after party. Am I right, Seth? <laughs> if Trump takes home an award tonight, it'll be the first thing he's ever won without Putin's help. <laughs> the nominees for best oppression of political opponents are President Nicolas Maduro, Venezuela, for using midnight raids to jail his political adversaries. Prime Minister Hun Sen, Cambodia, for dissolving his country's main opposition party. President Donald Trump, the United States, for demanding an investigation of a political opponent. And the oppressi goes to... Nicolas Maduro! Best performance by a dictator in a propaganda video. Gorbanguly Verde Makamada. State-run media. Donald Trump, sword dance. Rodrigo Duterte sings E Cow. And the winner is Gorbanguly Berde Makamada. The nominees for excellence in delegitimizing the media are Bashar al-Assad, Syria. We're living in a fake news era, as you know. Nicolas Maduro, Venezuela. This is the real fake news, a post-truth era. Donald Trump, 
the United States. Just because of the attack of fake news and, and uh, attacking our network, I, I just want to ask you, sir. I'm changing it from fake news, though. Do, doesn't that undermine? Very fake news. I yeah. know, but aren't you? <laughs> and the oppressive goes to Donald Trump. I call it, you know, fake news. The level of dishonesty, where they'll take a story that should be good. I know good from bad. In fact, sometimes I say, oh, this is going to be nice to read. I'll say, whoa. And they will purposely totally change it away. It's fake news. Well, I guess Trump isn't quite there yet, but good news, there's always next year.